Um, okay, Emily, you said I have an offer I would love some support on. Are you here? Hello, Ted. Yes, I'm here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Well, where are you uh, zooming in from? I'm zooming in from Sweden. Okay, welcome. It looks like you have antlers on your head. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what's your situation? Okay, so I have an offer I'm working on and a, a beta version of a longer, like it's going to be a longer program for like in future, maybe nine months I'm thinking of, but now I'm doing a beta version for like maybe eight or six weeks to right. test it out. Um, and I have started to write a section about it, and that's actually what I would like to have feedback on, but I'm not sure if we will make that now, actually. Um, how long is it? Seven pages. That's probably, well, okay, but do you have a link for it? Yeah, sure. Let's throw it in the chat. Um, let me, um, sorry, I'm just going to find the link. Because um. what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first, the very top of it, because that's where 99% of, of the, the work needs to happen. Uh, oh, right. Let's see. Okay. Okay so, so the first, okay. so the first part is like, I have a lot of my bio in my first part. So yeah, it's, um, right. um, um okay uh so uh i can't edit or comment which is fine uh style is spelt with a unless you that's intentional is with a y but that may be intentional okay, okay. Um, if you're reading this it means you're interested in more high school living where okay so i'll just say right away um this feels a like very broad in that yeah. this could, I could put a lot of holistic practitioners names here and it would still be true. And by mm -hmm. the way, that's a helpful thing to look at is if you look at your homepage or the first part of your sales page, could I put a bunch of your colleagues names there or business names and the offer still be accurate? Because if so, it means we probably haven't really gotten the niche dialed. The other thing is, um, I mean, I guess this might just be on your website, but we don't start with ourselves. We start with them because uh, mm -hmm. this is about you. And initially, unless it's just on your website, I'm like, what about me? Okay, so then we go into your bio. Um, so, okay, so right, right away, I don't see the relevance. I see you're talking about yourself a lot, generally about the holistic thing. Yes. Um, Okay, and then we get to the, what, what if you could feel, okay, this feels very broad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just think there's more work to do on the niche from skimming this. Yes. Um, I don't, hey, nice books. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right. Okay. So you may have uh, ended the relationship, long relationship. And, and, okay. And again, these are uh, suddenly there's a lot of very, yeah. So I would just dig into the puttering prep work. That's the main mm -hmm. feedback I give. So marketingcreatives.com slash puttering prep. Uh, you'll find the niching exercises. And because there's lots of work you could do. There's lots of people you could help. But one of the biggest questions around niching is just who are your people? Mm -hmm. Out of all the people you could help, out of all the situations you could help them with, what is the one that you most want to help them with? Another way to look at this whole thing is there's this list of all the things they, they're interested in, they might want in their life. And then my question back to you would be, why are they doing it? What's holding them back? I mean, they clearly probably already want these things. They know these things. So let me ask you just now, why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they implementing it? Why aren't they living out what they value and believe in? Oh, big question. Um, well, like my experience here in my country, home country, it's um, a lot of, 
I'm I working in a body level, uh, so I'm working with emotions and I'm working with like getting contact with yourself emotionally again. Um, and I can recognize there's either people are very contact with their emotions or they are not. And the people I'm reaching to is the people who are not in contact. Are they aware that they're not in contact with their emotions? Uh, some of them are, some of them aren't. Okay. So here's, this can be, this is a helpful way to look at it. If you are trying to help somebody with something they're not aware of, you know it's there. So in this case, they're out of touch with their emotions and the lack of being in touch with their emotions is causing all these other troubles, right? Yeah. Okay. So then this is the, this is the homework I would give is you think, okay, if somebody is not in touch with their emotions, first question what are all the symptoms or situations that are likely to happen if they're out of touch with their emotions? And, and like what practical little everyday things, what scenarios will they find themselves in if they're just out of touch with their emotions? So number one, you make a list. Number two, there's an exercise. There's a few ways to look at this, but you look at the, the whole list and you can make a chart. Here's one version of a chart. You can experiment with others. On the up and down, you write, it's like one through 10, how passionate am I about helping people with that situation? And then on the side to side, one through 10, how competent do I feel in helping people with that mm -hmm. specific situation? And then you just chart all those symptoms that you wrote down somewhere on the chart. So you might say, oh, this one, I'm a 10 out of 10 on passion, but uh, I have no personal experience with that situation. So I'm a two out of 10 on competence or vice versa. Man, I can hit home runs on that. A 10 out of 10 on competence and passion, 2 out of 10. Couldn't give a shit. So you start to plot it, yeah? Because what we're looking for ideally is things that we're passionate about helping people with, but we also feel very competent in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the low-hanging fruit. That's the easy stuff anyways. But you could also do it by how passionate and how profitable do I think this niche would be, or there may be other criteria to use. But we just start to look at all the symptoms that might come from this. And the other one, I'll leave it on this and we'll wrap up the call, is, you know, our deepest wound is often a doorway to our truest niche. I just said on yeah. a big email about this. That's so awesome. as you look at all those symptoms, it's just helpful to say, which of these are the ones that brought me to this work? Because that's probably where you have the most ease, uh, the most to say. It's going to be the easiest for you to market. Um, and, you know, you can draw this out again. What's the... Um, what is that specific situation they're in? What's mm -hmm. the moment they're in around their realization or awareness of the um, uh, they're, they're being in touch with their emotions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So.